All right, this one, we have a steel spherical ball that's rolling inside of a half pipe. And it rolls down without slipping. Okay, we're gonna release it from rest at a point that, or at a position that's described with the angle theta there. And it'll roll down, and at some point, it'll go past center and back up on the other side up to a new angle of, uh, calling it negative 20 degrees. Basically, it's 20 degrees past having been at the very bottom of the pipe. Okay. When it gets to that point, I want us to find the instantaneous linear and angular velocity of the ball and the linear and angular acceleration of the ball, as well as the force that is experienced between the ball and the surface of the pipe right there at that point. The uh, radius to the inner wall of the pipe is 15 inches, and the diameter of the ball is 4 inches. Okay? What are, some, what are a couple of things that you feel like you might want to know before we even get started with anything else? Okay, I'll say a glaring hole in what I would like to know about this problem is uh, what is the mass of the ball? Okay, that seems like something that I'd, I would definitely want to know. Well, many of you may not have memorized the formula for the volume of a sphere but it is in the back of your book or on your reference sheet that you're allowed to use on exams and whatnot. Um, it says 4 pi r cubed over 3 is the volume of a sphere. Okay? 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay? The other thing that is a nice piece of information to look up while we're here we're going to need to know the moment of inertia for a sphere. Okay? And it is right here in the same spot. It says it's going to be 2 mr squared over 5. Okay? And this is about the center of gravity. So 2 fifths mr squared. Okay? The other piece of information that you'd probably really want to know is what is the density of steel? Because you're given the, the uh, material that it's made out of. And so rather than force us to look that up live, let me go ahead and give it to us. The density for steel is 4.54 ounces per cubic inch. All right, so what can I do with all that? Let me first find mass, okay? I'll just do mass over here real quick. Okay, the mass is just going to be equal to the density, 4.54 ounces per inch cubed times the volume, okay? And the volume is just going to be 4 pi, the radius of this is 2 inches, that's cubed, okay, and that's then divided by 3, okay, and I'll tell you what else we'll do, let's figure out how many pounds this is, so how many ounces are in a pound, 16 ounces are in a pound. All right, so 4.54 times 4 times pi uh, times 2 cubed divided by 3 times 16. Okay. So that means my ball weighs 
and we'll just say 9.509 pounds, okay? But another way that I'd like to express this, because pounds there, you know, I prefer to use pounds such that it is a force, and since we're assuming this is on the earth, uh, you know, a pound mass weighs a pound force on earth, and so, you know, that we can think of that as the weight. If I want to really know what the mass is, though, what do I do? I've got to divide it by 32.2, okay? Which gives me 0.2953, uh, okay? And because I might want that later, I'm going to store that into M. Okay. Um, I tell you what, I may as well go back one again. Okay. And I'll store this into F. In case I need those values. All right, so that's a good place to get started. Um, what else do you think I might need to know here that I could just quickly get calculated so that I'd have it? Okay, I gave us a formula for it right up here. You probably are gonna want your uh, moment of inertia. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick as well. I about G, gonna be equal to two-fifths of the mass. The mass is just 0.2953 slugs. Okay, times R squared, all right? And R again is two inches. Quick question for you. When we're working in the US system like this, uh, for dynamics problems, are you more comfortable working in inches or in feet? Okay. Typically, I usually work these problems such that everything winds up in feet. Why do you think I do that typically? Okay. Here's what it comes down to. What is the definition of a pound force? Okay. A pound force is a slug what? Foot per second squared. All right. If I'm going to work such that I put everything in base units, I will typically pick feet as my length unit. So while I'm here, instead of getting this calculated in terms of slug inches squared, let me get it calculated in terms of slug feet squared. Okay. So how do I get that done? Well, here's one way to do it. I can multiply here by 12 inches in a foot like this squared. Okay, I should give myself a little bit of room there. Okay, so IG then just ends up being 2 times, I have that stored in M, uh, times 2 squared, okay, divided by 5 times 12 squared, okay, which gives me 3.281 times 10 to the minus third. Okay, and this is going to be in slug feet squared. All right. So these are all just things that we need. We'll get them kind of, we'll get them stored and put this one in E.
All right, so far so good. What do you think's next? I would say a pretty good place to start this problem is we need a, a nice free body diagram, okay? And our free body diagram is gonna be a little different this time in one specific sense. And that is that it has to be generalized enough that we don't care what theta is. It has to be expressed in terms of theta, a general theta. Okay, so let me draw this thing. And I'll try to draw it a little bit big. Maybe a little something like that. All right, so there's the ball. We're, we're drawing a free body diagram of the ball. All right. Um, the first thing that I'll do here is establish uh, what I'll call a normal direction and a tangential direction, okay? So my normal direction that I'm gonna establish kind of points up like this. And my tangential direction is gonna be perpendicular to that pointing this way. Something like that. All right, now these are both, you know, kind of in the context that there is also uh, a coordinate system that's aligned with gravity. So I'll kind of acknowledge that on here like this, but this is not the coordinate system I'm planning on using for most of my efforts, okay? So, but I'll put it on there anyway. What's the relationship between the two sets of coordinate systems that I have on here, my normal and tangential that I've put on there, and then my, um, you know, sort of the direction of gravity is generally presumed to be down relative to your figure unless it's stated otherwise, so that's true here as well. The direction of gravity is down, all right? So, you know, I would say that uh, this angle right here is theta. Okay, so depending on where this ball has rolled in the pipe, we can describe normal and tangential components relative to the, where the ball strikes the pipe with that uh, variable. And that would also be right there. All right, what sorts of forces are applied to the ball? Okay, one easy one is the weight, all right? And how much is that weight? Okay, it's gonna be that value of 9.509 .09 pounds. Like so. Okay, what else? Okay, well another thing is that I need to put on here the force from where the ball touches the pipe. Okay, so that looks like it might be right about here for a normal force. But then I'll also have this tangential component of force. And if the ball's rolling down kind of in the position that is shown right now, then I would expect that there would be a tangential force that would sort of resist the motion that the ball will probably do, right? It's gonna be pushing against it uh, as it starts to roll down. I'll call that FT. All right, so far so good. What else should we put on here? Let me put a few other things. Uh, first of all, let me put on here um, that we have an angular acceleration that begins to happen for this ball, okay? So I'm going to put that on right here, and I'll call that alpha. Uh, 
And I want to be clear here, this problem is a little tricky because I have multiple angles that are changing simultaneously. Um, alpha in this case is not theta double dot. Would you agree with that? Why not? So theta is describing the position of the ball, the position of the center of the ball. Alpha here is describing the angular acceleration of the ball about its own center of gravity axis. And those are two different things. They're related to each other, but they aren't you know, the exact same variable. So we have to be careful with that. All right, the other uh, couple things I'll put on here, let me just go ahead and establish this. I'll put a vector on here for the acceleration. I'm, I'm combining, this is something I, I actually have done a lot. This is what I actually always used to do when I was taking dynamics, is I would combine my free body diagram with my kinetic diagram all into one picture. So I'll do that in this particular case. Um, see if you like it. You might not like it, but if you like it, you can think about using this technique. Okay. So here, let me call this uh, AT. And here, let me call this uh, AN. <clears throat> all right, a couple other things that I want to put on here. First of all, um, I want to acknowledge how far it is from the center of the pipe that the ball rolls inside of to the center of the ball. And probably the easiest way to do that is to show uh, kind of a little dimension thing like this and say that relative to some, you know, center of the ball up here, how far is that? Well, it's going to be 15 inches minus 2 inches because there's 2 inches that goes right here. Okay, so this means, that means this is 13 inches. All right, so that's a bunch of stuff to set up right there. Um, let me go ahead and at this point, I will, I will write a moment equation and we'll do a moment equation about the point of contact, okay? This, that's this point right here. That's where the ball is contacting the inside of the pipe. And let me sum moments here. about that point of contact. I'll again take counterclockwise to be positive. The nice thing about choosing the point of contact to some moments around is what? I don't know Fn or Ft, and they're a little bit difficult for me to figure out, right? So if I choose that point to some moments around, then I don't have to worry about what they are, okay? And we'll see what equation arises. Okay, so the only force that I have to deal with here is just the force of the weight, 9.509 pounds. Times what? Okay, I would say we would take this and multiply it by two inches, but not the entire two inches. We want two inches times the cosine, well, let me ask you this, cosine or sine? All right, here's, here's how you would think about that. The triangle that I'm looking at is a triangle right here, okay? The hypotenuse is two inches long. I'm looking for this perpendicular distance, and so, and, and the angle is right here. This is my angle theta. Okay, so that tells me that I need two inches not times the cosine, but times the sine of theta. Okay, and what's this going to be equal to?
Because I don't, I don't see any other forces that act on this body that create moments. So what is this going to be equal to? Well, it'll just be equal to, um, since we're summing moments about the point of contact, we have to uh, take into consideration two things. One of the things is uh, the effect of the acceleration about the center of gravity. Okay, so I, I'll go ahead and put that value in there. I calculated it already. So we have this is going to be equal to 3.281 times 10 to the minus third slug feet squared. Okay, times alpha. But then what? What do I have to do if I'm not summing up moments around the center of gravity? Which I'm not in this case. Okay. What I probably have to do is add on to it what? Okay, my kinetic moment, right? I have to add on to this thing the mass. Okay, the mass is 0 0.2953 slugs times what? Times the acceleration of the center of gravity. Now, here's the thing. If alpha is what I've given there, what is the acceleration going to be of the center of gravity? Okay. Well, it's just going to be equal to alpha times two inches. Okay, because it's two inches from the point of contact up to the center of gravity. Uh, of this thing, and so alpha times two inches gives me that acceleration. All right. Um, but what other term do I need? Because remember, for my kinetic moment, this what I, what I put right here is the acceleration. I'll put that down here. Acceleration of CG. Okay, right now I've got mass times acceleration. What do I need to do to get my kinetic moment? I have to also multiply by the radius again. Okay, so I put another two inches to get my radius. All right, so that's what that is. All right. Well, so far, so good. But here's the thing. That very first part of the problem causes a lot of people uh, heartache because they say, oh, my goodness, we're no longer looking at an instant in time. We are now looking at a finite spread of time which means that we're probably going to have to integrate, okay? But don't fret, we actually have a way of relating the alpha that I am talking about here with the, uh, say, second derivative of theta. And here's how you know that you can do that, okay? If I wanted to say that my, um, Look, let's say I wanted to know what my acceleration was of this piece. And so let me, I'm going to do it in a different color so we didn't, don't mix up my AT there. But let's say that, how does alpha relate with this acceleration that I have right here? Okay, I would say alpha R, right? So A is equal to alpha R. The thing is, right at that point, 
it has to have the same acceleration as um, the acceleration that you get from theta. And remember, theta is measured relative to the center of the pipe. So this also has to be equal to theta double dot times its radius, okay? Which is basically, you know, maybe I'll start putting in some numbers here um, for all of them. Acceleration there, we just said was alpha times two inches. And we're saying that's also equal to theta double dot times 13 inches. Okay, it's kind of hard to see for y'all, isn't it? Um, but even that's not quite right. What direction does theta increase? It kind of goes the opposite direction, right? So this actually needs a negative sign in it. So this is how theta double dot relates with alpha for this problem. And so let me, I'll just kind of summarize that up here and say, well, maybe I'll do it this way. Um, alpha is equal to negative theta double dot times 13 inches over two inches. Okay, and that's just looking at that, that center point of the ball, the motion of that center point of the ball can be described both in terms of alpha as well as in terms of theta double dot, which are in this particular problem are two different things because they're describing the motion relative to the center of the pipe or the motion uh, of the ball around its own axis. All right, so I'm gonna do a substitution using that piece of information and plug it in for alpha right up here. Okay, keep in mind, I can actually factor out that alpha and that kind of eases my uh, substitution just a little bit. Okay, so that means that what I can end up with is, let's see, 9.509 .09 pounds times two inches times the sine of theta is going to be equal to, let me factor out the alpha and do my substitution. So that would be minus theta double dot times 13 inches over two inches. Okay, I factored out that alpha and then over here, I'll put in my 3.281 times 10 to the minus third slug feet squared, okay, plus, I might run out of room here. I'll slide this whole thing down. So I'll do plus 0 0.2953 slug times two inches squared. I want for those to probably jive with one another. So what do you think I might want to do additionally? Probably multiply that last term there by what? Foot per 12 inches squared. Okay, I promise you we actually are getting somewhere here. Okay, because now that I have that expression figured out, it means that I can actually isolate my theta double dot. Okay, so theta double dot. Okay, it ends up being um, two over 13 we'll say minus two over 13 times, 
9.509 pounds times 2 inches. While I'm here, I'm going to put everything in terms of feet. Okay, so I'm going to put a 12 um, inches per foot right here times the sine of theta. Okay, and now I'll come through and divide by uh, all of that stuff. So down here I've got 3.281 times 10 to the minus third slug foot squared plus 0 0.2953 slug times 2 inches squared times foot per 12 inches squared. Why is this helpful? Okay, keep in mind, I have this really awesome expression. This really awesome expression tells me um, that I have, I can figure out what my change in uh, angular velocity is if I know the integral over a particular range. of my angular acceleration function as a function of angle itself, d angle. Do you remember this one? I'm, I'm stating it in a little bit different terms here, but it's the same thing, right? We're looking at angular uh, velocity, velocities on the left side. Why I've got the single dots there. On the right side, I've got acceleration in terms of angular position as the function that I'm integrating from one position to another. I have all that information. Okay? So it tells me then, because my initial velocity, it says I, up in the original problem, it says that I'm releasing it from rest at theta equals 70 degrees. That tells me that this right here is 0, and it tells me that theta i is equal to 70 degrees. Okay, So what this tells me then is theta dot f is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times, I'll tell you what, rather than belabor writing all that out again, I already stated what my acceleration was. So I'm just going to say this is just two times uh, the integral from 70 degrees up to negative 20 degrees. Okay. Of theta double dot as a function of theta, which is what I just wrote up here that I'll box in light blue. Okay, d theta. And that's something that I can just put right in the calculator. All right, change into radians. We'll start it over again. Two times uh, negative, oops, Sorry, 2 times the integral of negative fraction of 2 over 13 uh, times, <coughs> let's see here, another fraction. We have f times 2 divided by 12 times the sine of x, all right, in the denominator I have, I believe I had that uh, 3.281 times 10 to the minus third was stored in e, let me go up
up here and make sure that that's where I had it stored. Yeah, E. So put that in, E uh, plus I believe I had 0.2953 stored in M. I get that multiplied by 2 squared. We'll actually do it this way. I'll put it as 2 over 12 squared. All right. dx. And we integrate this from 70, okay? Um, but I don't want to just put in 70. I want to put in 70 times pi over 180. And we'll go up to a negative 20 times pi over 180. All right, and this gives me 5.038. Let me store that. That's something that I'm going to want probably later. Uh, let me just store that in A. Okay, this is in radians per second, 5.037. Okay, but that's not actually what I wanted. Okay, that, I mean, it's, it's a, a really important step along the way, but it really wants the instantaneous linear and angular velocity, we'll start with that, of the ball, and then we'll get to acceleration in just a second. Okay, if this is the angular velocity of the ball when it gets up to this new point, which is like over here somewhere, I know that its angular velocity relative to the middle point up here, its angular velocity is going to be related to its linear velocity. Okay, and it's related via the radius relative to the center. So if I take that angular velocity and I want to know what is the final velocity when it reaches that point, um, then all I got to do is take the 5.037 radians per second and multiply it by <clears throat> 13 inches. And that gives me 65.49. And that's in inches per second. All right, well, if I know that that's the final velocity when we're at this uh, position of 20 uh, degrees past the, the center location, well, that can also be converted into an angular acceleration for the ball because we know that at the point of contact, I tell you what, I'll, I'll draw a picture of it over here. Okay, what we just found here is that at this time, the ball has a velocity of 65.49 inches per second. But we also know that it doesn't slip and its point of contact is right here. So instantaneously, that is its center of rotation. Okay, this is the point, instantaneous center of zero velocity right where it's touching the pipe. Okay, which means that if I know this radius, which I do, it's two inches, then I can figure out what the uh, angular velocity is of this thing right here at this point in time. Okay, the angular velocity uh, is just going to be 65.49, I should use omega here, 
65.49 inches per second, okay? And I'll divide this by two inches. Okay, which gives me 32.74, <clears throat> and that's in radians per second. Okay, so just to kind of reiterate this before I get into the next part of the problem, this omega that I just found, this is about the CG. of the ball. It's basically how fast is the ball itself spinning, right? Because it's rolling along the surface, it's spinning, right? So how fast is it spinning? The, omega, the uh, theta dot, excuse me, the theta dot that I had up here a second ago, that is referring to the position of the ball relative to the pipe, right? So that's kind of how fast is this theta changing? Okay, so that's, I just want to be clear about what those two pieces mean. All right, so what we've done so far is we figured out the instantaneous linear and angular velocity of the ball. I'm going to save the question of acceleration of the ball for the second part of the problem, okay? Because that comes about as doing, you know, as in the process of doing this next uh, piece. So the next piece is find the force applied to the ball at the point where it contacts the pipe. Well, excellent. We actually already have a really nice free body diagram that we can use again for this purpose. Okay. So why don't I just slide all this stuff down? Okay. <clears throat> and we need to figure out here basically Fn and Ft. All right, so we already used the sum of moments. Let's use a sum of forces. So let me sum forces along the tangential direction. I'll start there. Okay, so there I've got Ft. All right minus 9.509 pounds times what? Probably the sine of theta, okay? And what's theta? Okay, for theta now, this is going to be equal to minus 20 degrees. All right, anything else in the tangential direction? Probably not, okay. And so this is now going to be equal to AT or MAT, right? 0.2953 slugs times AT. All right, let me do my forces in the normal direction. Okay, here I've got FN minus 9.509 pounds. Okay, times the cosine of negative 20 degrees. And this is going to be equal to 0.2953 slugs times a n. How many unknowns do I have at this point? Okay, right now I've got 
four? Is that right? But I have more information I can put in. What is my other information I can use? Can I express, for instance, AT in terms of alpha? What do you think? It looks to me like AT is going to be um, you know, alpha times negative 2 inches, all right? Because I have that point of contact. Again, this is my point of instantaneous uh, center of rotation. And so if you take your alpha and you multiply by the radius there, it gives you your tangential component of your acceleration, okay? So that means that, you know, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll do it in a separate row here. AT is equal to negative alpha uh, times 2 inches. What about AN? AN is going to be equal to that uh, theta, remember my theta dot term that I just figured out? It's going to be that squared times the radius. And the radius there is going to be that 13 inch. Okay? Why do I say that? Well, the thing as it's moving around that, um, as it's uh, the ball as it's moving around that path, uh, the path itself is accelerating it inward toward the center of the pipe. And that's going to be the, um, the value for that. And so we actually know this value, right? This is going to be equal to, uh, what was it, 5.037 5 radians per second. OK. So I can just substitute these in for AT and for AN. How many unknowns do I have in my moment equation? Do I know theta? Yeah, I know theta, don't I? So that means the only thing I don't know in that equation is what? Alpha. I may as well just go ahead and solve that equation, and then I've got a two by two, okay? So we'll go ahead and put that in here. So 9.509, I believe I had that stored in F, times two times the sine of negative 20, okay, is equal to, okay, 3.281 times 10 to the third was in E. times x plus, uh, I believe I had this next one in m, times x times, okay, here I've got 2 squared, but I want to probably put that into feet so that I jive with my other uh, values, so let me do that. I believe I had another one that I didn't fix earlier, so we'll do it this way. Which other one did I need to fix? This two right here I have in inches, so let me change that one into feet. All right, and I'll solve this. Okay. This tells me my alpha is negative 94 point, you know, 4. Okay, alpha negative 94.4 radian per second squared. Does that make sense? Should it be negative? 
Okay. I would say that since alpha, I have it defined as picking up speed and now, you know, rolling down the pipe, and now we're rolling back up the other side of the pipe, it should be slowing down, right? And that makes sense then that my alpha would be a negative value given how I've defined it, uh, you know, that direction that it, we would expect it to be positive when it's rolling down. Okay, so that makes me feel good that that at least has the right sign. Okay, what else? I should be able to plug that in now for AT. Okay. So AT ends up being this times 2, uh, X times 2, right? Whatever I have stored in X. All right. So X times 2. All right. And it's actually times a negative, right? So I should have put that negative in there. So I have a 188 point 8. And this is going to be in inches per second squared. Okay. Does that sign make sense? Okay. So AT continues to point. I have it to where the ball is up on this part of the curve, right? And so as that ball goes from that side of the curve up to the other side of the curve, okay, you would expect AT to actually be positive the direction that I have it defined. And it is, right? So that makes me feel good that my acceleration in the tangential direction is equal to 188 point inches or inches per second squared. Okay. Now what about AN? I don't need anything extra to do that. I can just take, I believe I had 5.0737. Uh, where did I have that stored? Maybe I didn't. Okay. I think I may have had it stored in A. Uh, let me put this in B. All right. Let me actually do this. Negative B. Because I want to put it in there as a positive. All right. Let me see what I have stored in A. Yeah, I thought maybe I had it in there. I just didn't write it down. All right. So 5.037. squared times 13 inches. Okay, that gives me 329.9 uh, inches per second squared. What direction? Okay, well that's given by how I defined it on my diagram, right? inward toward the center, which that makes me feel good too, because that is correct. All right. Well, now I have those two values. Shall we go ahead and figure out what my contact forces are? I think so. All right. So let me see here. I need to do X. minus F, okay, times the sine of negative 20 is equal to M times, I believe I had this other thing stored in B. So 52.4, let me make sure here real quick, slug, what's wrong with what I just did?
do my units jive? Okay, I have this in inches per second squared. What do I need so that it goes well with my slug right there to create a force of pounds? Okay, I probably need to go in here and put in a factor of what? Okay, probably feet over 12 inches for both of these. All right, so we'll go back and we'll fix that. I think I just need to divide by 12. Okay. All right. And what I've got there is 1.1 393, what should that be? Okay, that's my FT, FT 1.393, whatever the units, pounds, right? And Fn, x minus f times the cosine of negative 20 uh, is equal to m times, man, I probably didn't store that other one. I'll just have to put it in like this, 329.9 divided by 12. That gives me 17.05. Pounds. All right. Questions? Cool.